Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm from amandacrochets.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make the moss stitch dish towel. This dish towel measures approximately 12 inches wide by 20 inches long and you can always change this up to whatever size that you would like but I thought this was a nice towel size. And this is also going to be a very textured stitch. And if you've seen my previous videos, you will know that I also made the moss stitch dishcloth and the moss stitch hot pad. And you can pair all three of these together for a nice little kitchen set. You can give this away as a housewarming gift, you can sell them at craft fairs, or you can even use them for yourself. The possibilities are endless. You are going to be using 100% cotton yarn for this project and you can use whatever yarn you would like and whatever color that you would like. I just really wanted to keep a neutral theme so I did this in a creamy color. But again, you can use whatever color that you would like. So let's get started on today's tutorial where I show you how to make the moss stitch dish towel. So for my dish towel, I used Lion Brand 24-7 cotton. And this is a number four worsted weight yarn, and it is a 3.5 ounce skein or 100 grams. It was 186 yards or 170 meters. It is also 100% mercerized cotton, and it is machine wash and dryable. The recommended hook size is a G6 4 millimeter. And the color that I used for my dish towel is Ecru, and I used a skein and a half. So this is all that I have left of my second skein. And you're also going to need a size H 5mm crochet hook. So I'm going to be using a different color today. Still the same yarn, but a different color so you can see my stitches. And again, this is the Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton, and the color I'm going to be using is Bay Leaf. This is the same color that I use for my dishcloth. Okay, so to get started, you're going to be making a chain of 48. If you do want to change up your chain and make your dishcloth bigger or smaller, you just want to make sure you have an even number of chains. So once you have your slip knot, you're going to go ahead and make 48 chains or whatever chain length that you would like. So just make sure you have an even number of chains and you can make this dish towel any size that you would like. So for my dish towel, I ended up making 48 chains. So to make a chain, you're going to do yarn over your hook and pull through that loop on your hook. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Continue until you have a total of 48 chains. Okay, once you have your 48 chains or your even number of chains, we can begin row one. For row one, you're going to make a slip stitch into the second chain from your hook. So the loop on your hook does not count. You're gonna count two chains from your hook. So one and two and you're going to insert your hook into that second chain, yarn over, pull through that chain, as well as the loop on your hook. And that completes your slip stitch. Next, you're gonna make one half double crochet in the chain after that. So yarn over your hook, find that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And that completes your half double crochet. Now you're going to repeat this all the way across. So you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch. So again, insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over, pull through that chain as well as the loop on your hook. 
Now when you make your slip stitches, you want to make sure that you try and make them a little bit more loose. So that way when you do your next row, you can go in the, sing the slip stitch and it won't be so tight. And also you're going to start and end each row with a slip stitch. So you want to make sure you keep those slip stitches loose as well so your work doesn't start to cinch in and get really tight along the edges. And if this becomes a little bit of a problem for you, you can always go up a hook size as well if that will help keep your slip stitches a little bit more loose. Okay, so next you're going to make a half double crochet. So yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. So again, you're just going to alternate slip stitch and half double crochet across your first row. And you should start and end your row with a slip stitch. So just continue making one slip stitch in, in one chain and in the next chain make a half double crochet. And we'll repeat this all the way across and I will show you how to continue on to row two. Okay, so I have two chains left so the second to the last chain should be a half double crochet and again in that very last chain you should have a slip stitch. And then this is what your row will look like. So for row two, you're going to go ahead and chain one and turn. So that chain one does not count and you're going to find that very first stitch which is right here and you're going to make a slip stitch. Again, try and keep your slip stitches loose. Next you're going to make a half double crochet into that next stitch. And then you're going to repeat this all the way across. So in the next stitch, uh, you're going to make a slip stitch. In the stitch after that, make a half double crochet. Make a slip stitch. In the stitch after that, make a half double crochet. So for row two, you're going to alternate between slip stitch and half double crochet across the entire row and you should end with a slip stitch in the very last stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and complete my row and show you how to move on to row three. Okay, so again I'm coming up to the end of my row. So I have a half double crochet and in that very last stitch which is going to be right here, you're going to go ahead and make a slip stitch. And then this is what two rows will look like. And you'll start to see your pattern form the more rows that you make. So for rows three through 90, you're gonna repeat row two. So you're gonna have a total of 90 rows. So again, chain one and turn. And in that very first stitch, which is gonna be right here, make a slip stitch and the stitch after that make a half double crochet. So you're going to alternate slip stitch and half double crochet for the remainder of this project and again you're going to have a total of 90 rows. So go ahead and complete your 90 rows and when you finish I will show you how to weave in your ends and complete your project. So just continue with row two and repeat that for a total of 90 rows. Okay, so I'm almost done and I have two stitches remaining. So you're gonna make a half double crochet and in that very last stitch, you're gonna make a slip stitch. And then you're gonna cut your yarn and have a little bit of a tail so I already did that and I have that much of a tail and all you're going to do 
is you're going to yarn over and pull through and then you're going to pull to tighten. Next you're going to get your tapestry needle and you're going to go ahead and weave in all of your ends. And the way that I like to weave in my ends is I just like to go in between these stitches and I like to go back and forth three times just to make sure it's really secure but again I like to go in between the stitches to hide that tail and you would do this for all of your yarn tails for your project and then once you have that you can go ahead and cut your tail and then your project is complete. So again, do that for the remaining tails, and then this is what your finished dishcloth look or your finished dish towel looks like. So again, it has that nice texture to it, and you can use this for drying your hands off, or if you want to dry your tabletop or countertop off. And again, you can make this in many different colors. And you can also pair this with my moss stitch dishcloth and my moss stitch hot pad, which I will go ahead and link below in the description box. So thank you so much for joining me today on learning how to make the moss stitch dish towel. I hope you enjoy today's tutorial and I hope you give this pattern a try. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see all future videos by me. And as always, happy crocheting! Bye.